Today on Ortho 2, we are going to be talking about Paraceratherium. Paraceratherium was a giant hornless rhinoceros, or as I like to call, the real-life AT-AT. It was one of the largest terrestrial mammals to ever live and is fascinating in many ways. Before we talk about the amazing proportions of this animal, let's talk about its evolution first. The origins of this animal can be reasonably traced back to the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. After all, a mammal this large could not exist due to the dominance of the dinosaurs. The asteroid hit about 65 million years ago. This impact was catastrophic for life on Earth. No ecosystem was left untouched. Since the dinosaurs were diminished to small feathery creatures, mammals for the first time could really diversify. This is why many of the groups seen today can be traced back to this time. Odd toe undulates first appeared about 56 million years ago. They would go on to evolve into all sorts of things. The animals we know today from this group include zebras, rhinos, horses, and tapirs. The superfamily Rhinoceratoidea can trace its origins back to about 50 million years. This group was historically much more diverse than the mere five living species we have today all of which have a relatively uniform morphology. The diversity within the rhinoceros group was much larger in prehistoric times. They ranged from dog size to giants like Paraceratherium. There were long-legged rhinos adapted for running and squat semi-aquatic hippo-like animals. Most of them lacked horns, a feature commonly associated with the group today. Rhinoceros fossils are identified mainly by characteristics of their teeth which is part of the animals most likely to be preserved. The subfamily Indrocathirinae is a group of long-legged hornless rhinoceroses commonly known as Paraceratheres. They first appeared in the Eocene Epoch and lived into the early Miocene. The first Paraceratheres were only about the size of large dogs, growing progressively larger in the late Eocene and Oligocene. They are most common in the rainforest floodplain region which is now Kazakhstan, India, and southwest China, and lived much further inland throughout northern and central Asia. Paraceratheres reached their peak evolution from the middle Oligocene to the early Miocene, where they grew to a monstrous size. The largest genus was Paraceratherium, which was more than twice as heavy as an African bull elephant and was one of the largest land mammals that ever lived. The exact dimensions of this beast are unknown because of incomplete fossil evidence. The shoulder height was about 4.8 meters or 15.7 feet. In comparison, the African bush elephant is on average about 10 feet at the shoulder. Its neck was about 8 feet long itself and held a long head. This would have made it look even more massive. Paraceratherium was about 7.4 meters or 24.3 feet in length. Its maximum weight is estimated to be about 15 to 20 tons, which at its highest is 44,000 pounds. That is three times the weight of the average African bush elephant, which is the largest terrestrial mammal alive today. On average, they would have been smaller at about 24,000 pounds or 11,000 kilograms still twice as large as most elephants. One of their most unique features is their skull. The largest skulls of Paraceratherium are around 1.3 meters or 4.3 feet long. Paraceratherium had a long forehead, which was smooth and lacked the roughened area that serves as attachment points for the horns of other rhinoceroses. The bones above the nasal region are long and the nasal incision goes far into the skull. This indicates that Paraceratherium had a prehensile upper lip, similar to that of the black rhinoceros, or even a short proboscis like the one seen in tapirs. Not as long as an elephant, but this trunk structure may have been quite large. The back of the skull was low and narrow, without the large lambdoid crests at the top and along the sagittal crest, which otherwise found in horned and tusked animals that need strong muscles to push and fight. It also had a deep pit for attachment points of the nuchal ligaments, which hold up the skull automatically. 
The occipital condyle was very wide and Paraceratherium appears to have large, strong neck muscles, which allowed it to sweep its head very strongly downwards while foraging for branches. One skull of Paraceratherium has a domed forehead, whereas others have flat foreheads, possibly because of sexual dimorphism. A brain endocast of a species of Paraceratherium shows it was only about 8% of the skull length, while the brain endocast of an Indian rhinoceros is 17.7% of its skull length. The species of Paraceratherium are mainly discernible through skull characteristics, mainly slight differences in the strength or thickness of some bones. The front teeth of Paraceratherium are reduced to a single pair of incisors in either jaw. They were large and conical being described as tusks. The incisors may have been larger in males. Canine teeth otherwise found behind the incisors were lost. The incisors were separated from the row of cheek teeth by a large gap. This feature is found in mammals where the incisors and cheek teeth have different specializations. Each molar was about the size of a human fist. Among mammals, they were only exceeded in size by proboscideans, though they were very small relative to the skull. No complete set of vertebrae and ribs of Paraceratherium have been found, and the tail is completely unknown. Imagine if the tail was like that of a sauropod. It's completely ridiculous, but still amusing. The atlas and axis vertebrae of the neck were wider than most in modern rhinoceroses, with space for strong ligaments and muscles that would be needed to hold up the large head. The neurospines were quite long and formed a long hump along the back where neck muscles and nuchal ligaments for holding up the skull were attached. Like sauropod dinosaurs, Paraceratherium had pleurical-like openings in the presacral vertebrae, which probably helped lighten the skeleton. The limbs were quite large and robust and supported the animal's large weight. There are some similarities to proboscideans and sauropod dinosaurs. Unlike elephants, which have lengthened upper limb bones, and shorter lower hand and foot bones, Paraceratherium had short upper limb bones and had longer hand and foot bones. Some foot bones were almost 50 centimeters or 20 inches long. The thigh bones typically measure about 1.5 meters or 4.9 feet in length, a size only exceeded by those of some elephants and dinosaurs. The limbs were held in a column-like posture instead of bent as seen in smaller animals, which reduced the need for large limb muscles. The front limbs had three toes. Because of such a large size, overheating may have been a problem. They may have frequented water holes or even have been mainly nocturnal. They would have not been able to move quickly. They likely had large home ranges and possibly migratory routes. Being so large, a lot of foraging would have been necessary. So many resources were needed that it was a significant limiting factor for their populations. The simple, low-crowned teeth indicate that Paraceratherium was a browser with a diet consisting of relatively soft leaves and shrubs. Studies of mesoware on Paraceratherium teeth confirm the creatures had a diet of soft leaves. Microware studies have yet to be conducted. It would extract relatively little nutrition from the food and would have to eat a very large volume to survive. Like other herbivores, Paraceratherium would have had a large digestive tract. It has been argued that the large incisors were used for defense or for loosening shrubs by moving the neck downward, therefore acting like picks and levers. A similar behavior is seen in tapirs who use their front teeth to strip bark off of trees. Some Russian authors suggested that the tusks were probably used for breaking twigs, stripping bark, and bending high branches. Birds of Paraceratherium may have migrated while continuously foraging from tall trees, which smaller mammals could not reach. Osborne suggested that the mode of foraging would have been similar to that of high-browsing giraffe or okapi, rather than to modern rhinoceroses whose heads are carried close to the ground. Most terrestrial predators in their habitat were no bigger than a wolf and not a threat to Paraceratherium. Adult individuals would have been too large for any land predators to attack, but the young would have been vulnerable for some time. 
Bite marks on bones from the boot heap beds indicate that even adults may have been preyed on by 11 meter or 36 foot long crocodiles. Astorgosuchus buchtiensis was as big as the infamous Sargosuchus. Since Parasuratherium may have frequented watering holes, these crocodilians may have posed a significant problem. Though they were very large, Parasuratherium was so large that even a 36 foot long croc may have only been able to prey on the young or ill. The gestation period of Parasuratherium may have been lengthy and individuals may have had long lifespans. It may have lived in small herds, perhaps consisting of females and their calves, which they protected from predators. It has been proposed that 20 tons or 44,000 pounds may be the maximum weight possible for land mammals, and Paraceratherium was as close as it could be to this limit. The reasons mammals could not reach the much larger size of sauropod dinosaurs are unknown. The reason may be ecological instead of biomechanical and perhaps related to reproduction strategies. African bush elephants take about 22 months to give birth. This may have been even longer in an animal as large as Paraceratherium. Remains assignable to Paraceratherium have been found from formations across Eurasia. Their distribution may have correlated with the paleogeographic development of the Alpine Himalayan mountain belt. The fauna which coexisted with Paraceratherium included rhinoceroses, artiodactyls, rodents, bear dogs, weasels, hyenodonts, nimravids, and cats. The habitat may have varied across its range based on the types of geological formations it has been found in. Relatively arid environments in the Hassanda Gol Formation of Mongolia, and even temperate subtropical forests that were found in Pakistan. The reasons Paraceratherium became extinct after surviving for about 11 million years are unknown, but it was likely there was no single cause. Theories include climate change, low production rate, and invasion by Gompothir protocidians from Africa in the late Oligocene between about 28 and 23 million years ago. Gompothirs may have been able to considerably change the environments that they entered the same way that African elephants do today by destroying trees and turning woodland into grassland. With a scarce food source, their populations may have been vulnerable to other threats. Large predators like Amphicyon also entered Asia and Africa during the Miocene. These predators may have preyed on Paraceratherium calves. Other herbivores also invaded Asia during this time. They remained confined to Asia throughout their reign. No fossil remains of Paraceratheres have been found in Europe or North America, even though the Paraceratheres had millions of years of opportunities to reach those regions. The collision with the Indian subcontinent and the Himalayan uplift led to global cooling, desertification, and disappearance of forest habitats. This may have been a dominant factor in the extinction of these giant ungulates. Paraceratherium is one of my favorite animals from prehistory. The immense size and overall strange body plan is amazing. If only they had a horn. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I make videos on prehistoric life, ancient man, and occasionally even more recent history. I'll see you on the next episode of Northo 2. See ya.